So what we discussed last time was time dilation, the fact that when I'm moving near the speed of light, as you pretend I am now doing, move near the speed of light, but I'm not showing time dilation. Why not? Because I haven't turned it on. Let me turn on time dilation. And for me, time was going exactly the same speed. But for you, it was slowed down. The amount of time that I existed was much less. It slows down by this factor called gamma. So if I'm not moving at all, gamma is 1. It's not slowing down at all. If I'm moving a quarter the speed of light, then it's slowing down by a factor of 1.03. That's about a 3% slowdown. Let's put in the, OK. All the, all, everything should go in the envelope, including the ones that weren't filled out, because they don't want me filling out the spares. If you're going 99% the speed of light, then you're slowed down by a factor of 7. That's dramatic. You will, if I'm going that fast, I will, you, you will time me and say, oh, he's gone for 7 years. And when I come out, I'll only be 1 year older. I will have experienced less time. This is amazing, as they say, amazing but true. Why is it true? We've discussed that before class. Uh, why not? I mean, there's no good answer to that. This, these are the equations for the way the world works. Maybe we wouldn't exist today if not for this because of some of the consequences I'll be coming to. Length contracts. So, you know, when, when I'm moving at 99% at the speed of light, I am actually seven times thinner. I look like a pancake. It only contracts in the direction I'm moving. The sideways directions don't change. I, a, a sphere becomes a pancake. It doesn't think it's a pancake. In its frame of reference, it hasn't changed. You have changed. You have become pancakes. This leads to a famous paradox. Think of it as the uh, train in the tunnel. A train's coming along real fast. And because it's going so fast, it gets short. It goes through a tunnel. The tunnel isn't very long, but this train's going so fast, it fits inside anyway. As soon as it's inside, you close both of the doors, the train is trapped inside the tunnel. But now let's analyze it from the point of view of the train. Here you are going really fast, and you're not shortened up at all. In fact, in that frame of reference, the tunnel is coming towards you. Not only that, but the tunnel is super short. So from the tunnel point of view, the train has gotten short, and it will fit inside. From the train point of view, the tunnel has gotten short. How can you possibly fit inside? And yet when the doors close, is it inside or not? This is one of the more famous paradoxes of relativity. And these paradoxes really work because, most, because, you, because the fact is relativity is self-consistent, but you have to consider everything. So how could this possibly be true? Does it get trapped inside or not? Well, people forget. One of the other aspects of relativity, which is simultaneity. I didn't use the word simultaneous in describing this paradox. What I said was, you close both doors. If I said, you close both doors simultaneously, you might have been keyed to what is the paradox here. Because if you close them simultaneously, in this frame of reference, when it's trapped inside, they're not closed simultaneously here. In fact, what happens is you close this one first, and then this one second. So there may be no, t what happens is you close this one first and this thing goes forward, crashes into the door, unless you stop it. But if you stop it, then, it, then, then, then uh, you know, this is the thing that's moving. If you stop it, then it expands back out. I'm not going to ask you to explain this paradox on any exam. Uh, and when I teach this in a physics course, I do require that of them. And then I spend really half of a lecture on it, working out the math, and showing that the simultaneity makes up for the difference. I want to give you a little bit of a flavor for what's going on. Whenever you get a paradox in relativity, it's almost invariably the fact that you're in intuitively assuming that things that are simultaneous really are simultaneous. Whereas the concept of which came first depends on your frame of reference. So let me just quickly describe this. I'm not going to ask you to do this. This is just for your own. You know, fun. Train, I'll just let me go over it again. Train in the tunnel. It's a long train. Maybe it's, you know, longer than the tunnel. Uh, but if it's going super fast, is it, Lorentz contracted by a factor of seven. Instead of it being 700 meters long, it's only 100 meters long. It's contracted 
So here it is, really short. And it fits inside easily. You simultaneously close both doors. It's on the inside. What happens then? Well, let's, let's, it's more complicated if we try to stop it, because if we try to stop it, it will suddenly expand and smash out both doors. If we let it go, it'll smash into this door. Uh, we can do either way, let it go or stop. In either case, it smashes into this door. Now let's look at it from the point of view of the train. It's a full 700 meters long. It, or this tunnel is moving towards it. The tunnel is now very short. It's Lorentz contracted. It's, it's no longer 700 meters long. It's only 100 meters long. It's going to, here you are in the train, and this tunnel is coming towards you, and there's no way you're going to fit inside of that. So what happens? Well, the front enters. And then it comes over here, and we'll take the scenario where we don't stop it, because that's easier to think about. And then it smashes into this side. Pops out. The back comes in. Meanwhile, this smash has already taken place. The back comes in and this door closes. The same series of events occurs in both reference frames. The front is inside. The back is inside. This door closes before the front hits it. This door closes after the back is in. Those are the same events. But the description of a event of, of the whole thing, which is spread out over space, does change because events that are simultaneous in one frame won't be simultaneous when looked at in the other frame. So in this case, the thing is inside before it smashes the left. In this case, it was never totally inside because we're talking about two separate events at two different locations that in this case were simultaneous. In this case, they still happen. They're just not simultaneous. That's the fastest lecture I have ever given on the train paradox.